that want to share some some um, mindfulness with you today. Anybody ever heard of that word? Mindfulness? Just party. So, so tell me what it means to you. Um, it means to be on full focus. Full focus. I love that. What's your name? Kaden. Thank you, Kaden. And you said you was turning your mom told you this morning? No, my mom tells me every day. How, and what context does she use and how does she say it? She like, she says that like, you need to have mindfulness and you like need to be aware when like you'll stop thinking about something and like just do something and she says that whenever you do that, she just says you have to have mindfulness. I love that. I tell your mom I love that she's doing that every day. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, so who else had their hand up? I think you did. What, what, what does it mean to you? Um, being aware of what you're doing. And, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that definition. Being aware of what you're doing. <coughs> yes, sir. Mine is to like just to surpass my obstacles and like think more openly about stuff and other things that like stop me from doing my work. What, what's your name? Marco. Marco, I'm just going to restate that because that's that's um, like a very unique thought to help me to get past my obstacles and to help me to do my work. Is that correct, Marco? Yeah. It's a, it's a, a way for him to, to get past him. I love that. Yeah. Um, I have ADHD, so it's really hard to stop and look what I'm doing. So I get in trouble a lot of the time for not looking at what I'm doing. But lately, I've been trying to have mindfulness and stop and see what I'm doing and think about how other people are feeling when I'm doing it. Because sometimes I just go off and do kind of whatever I want, and it's not okay. What's your name? Maisie. Maisie? You do not know So, here. So what Maisie shared, I mean, first of all, I just got to pause for a moment because your class right now is being 100% mindful. Not only are you being mindful, but you're also being courageous. Yeah. You're also being thoughtful. So this is truly um, an amazing class. You, I'll be honest with you. You are ahead of the curve, if that makes sense, that expression. Yeah. You're, you're ahead of the curve, the learning curve about mindfulness. So the A's are going to go first, and they're going to have 60 seconds to share a time in their life when they were super anxious. So um, Ooh, okay. I'll, I'll give you my example real quick. So I always tell my Greg Kinney stories. Greg was my best friend growing up, and I was about 12 years old, and we are jumping off a rock into a, a natural swimming hole, and Greg was super physical and loved to do that kind of thing, and, and I was afraid to jump. And it was probably like 18 feet up or so. And um, and so he, she was like in the water. He's like, just jump. It's easy. Come on, just do it. And, and he was a great friend. So he just, you know, kept like coaching me for like 10 minutes while I was up on top. Like, no, no, no. Oh, no. I didn't want to go. And what, what happens when you get anxious? Sorry, pushes you. <laughs> well, that's not a good that's friend. That's what happened to me. <coughs> Maybe, but hopefully not. But <laughs> worry about this. So <laughs> your heart rate goes up, mm -hmm. starts beating, and you get, and then you become more scared or less scared. More scared. The more scared. And the more time goes on, the faster your heart goes. So, okay. So your turn. A's ready, yes. set, go ahead. I started crying and my dad tried pushing me into the office and, I didn't go. and then I kept on crying and next to the my I went in and my heart was so how far do you think that they could go if they spent the whole year really being more and more and more proficiently mindful? 
I think if they got to a point, and some of them seem like they're already there, where they could um, become their own alchemist, they become in control of their own mindfulness by, in the morning before school, just like brushing their teeth and getting ready, uh, they take, you know, five minutes, that's all it takes, five minutes out of their morning to sit in a chair, lay in their bed, whatever, whatever position they want to relax in and practice their mindfulness techniques and skills, um, I think it would pay off dividends in their lives. The gift that keeps on giving, right? It, it'll help them with anxiety, help them with depression, help them to focus on their schoolwork, um, help them to be kinder people, help them to be stronger, healthier, and happier. So let's talk about our brains for a minute. So do you have a, do you have a thought on that? Yeah. We get um, really anxious because we don't know what's going to happen next. So let's say we go on a roller coaster. It's like, um, is it what we call it? Uh, the final destination, they get anxious because they know something's bad gonna happen. Like something bad is gonna happen. That our brains automatically think, oh, something bad might happen because we don't know what's gonna. Like we haven't had experience with that subject yet. <coughs> Frontal lobe or the neocortex. So, just let's talk about it just for a minute. <coughs> So when you A's and B's, when you told all your stories about being anxious, which part of the brain, don't, don't say it out loud, I just want you to think about it. Which part of the brain do you think was the, the very old brain, right? Our old brain at the base of our brain stem? Our middle brain, the mammalian brain? Or our very new brain? Which one do you think does fear and anxiety and I'm really scared? Which one do you think does that? What do you think? I know for a fact it's the, like, well, I think I know for a fact because it's the back one, mm -hmm. the one at the bottom, because my brother, he had to lose part of it because he had a seizure and so he, and it damaged his brain and it damaged the whatever it's called, however you say it. Okay, so, so you're correct, it's our reptilian brain. So everybody say reptilian brain. Reptilian. That's where that occurs because early man, this, this new brain wasn't fully developed. The reason it's called the newer brain, neo means new. Yeah. What does neo mean? No. So the newer brain is for all these complicated things we do. Mathematics, algebra, uh, deconstructing sentences, grammar, um, decision making. Oh, which one should I put into the science experiment? That's that's all in the front, the frontal lobe. Yeah. The old brain, the reptilian brain, is the one that goes, oh my gosh, I'm so scared, my math test is coming up. Or I'm gonna jump off this, into the swimming pool, this high dive, I'm really scared. So, if we can learn to control that part of our brain and not get stressed like Macy and can and work on our controlling anxiety and depression and um, preparing for school so as you, as you think about like the conversations we've been having we did the a and B partnering um, we did some other things so at this moment how are you feeling right now it's strange a strange feeling because you don't really sit like this in class a lot I do most of the time you sometimes you most of the time your legs or your toes are up in the air and your heels are up in the air and you're moving around, but yeah, this like is kind of just like, stand like a statue, side on the ground. Okay, so, uh, so I, you know, I think of what Maisie's saying, if I'm hearing her correctly, is as we're adjusting and I had you turn and face me and put your feet flat on the floor, it already started to change a little bit and she used words like, feels strange, feels a little bit odd, like, feels weird. not sure what we're gonna do next. Okay, so anybody else in the, saw a lot of hands? So, what do you think? Uh, it, it feels ner nervous. I feel nervous. Okay. Strange, I feel nervous, and I'm kind of shaky. 
kind of strange, kind of nervous, not sure what's going to happen here. Um, it kind of actually makes me feel like I don't know what's going on right now. Okay. Okay. So I think that's all kind of normal stuff, right? Not yeah. sure what's going to happen. Um, <coughs> weird. Weird? Okay. All right. So let's continue. So hands on your lap, right? And I'm going to show you an example, and then we'll all, we'll all go through it together. So you're going to do this three times. And then after the third time, you're going to keep your eyes closed. And I'm going to walk you through a couple steps while your eyes are closed. So here's what you're going to do. important because when you're breathing in through your nose, there, there's a, a piece of your anatomy called the diaphragm, yeah. and that takes in your air, right? So, okay, so I want uh, everybody to close your eyes. Put your hand on your belly. Okay. okay. Close, close, go ahead and close your eyes. And we're going to go in, in through our nose. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Hold it. And out through your mouth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In through your nose. Two, three, four. Hold it. Out, I mean, out through your mouth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last one, in through your nose, one, two, three, four, hold it, five, six, seven, eight, and out through your mouth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, now in through your nose, keep your eyes closed, out through your mouth, take, take your hand off your belly and put it back on your lap, in through your nose, out through your mouth and now try to slow your breathing try to slow it and and so you hardly notice anything moving your belly's hardly moving your chest is hardly moving your breathing is coming slower and slower like to think of your feet flat on the floor. Feel what it's like with just your hands completely relaxed. Feel what it's like to just, maybe you can't even hear your breath because it's so quiet. And if you're really quiet, you could probably hear the air conditioning. <laughs> if you're really, really quiet, you might be able to hear something from um, outside. Slowly open your eyes. Okay, and then with um, <coughs> making sure that you, you're giving your attention to the person talking again, who, who would be willing to share kind of how that felt? See if we can get 
can get get somebody new. Okay. See somebody who hasn't showed yes. Um, it kind of feels like when you're trying to sleep, you're trying to like calm down, stay, like stay still. Like you're just trying to close your eyes and like have a nice rest. So that you can eat. What's your name? Noah. So Noah said it's kind of like when you're trying to go to sleep and you're trying to stay still, close your eyes and relax and go to sleep. What do you think, so I'm going to ask you a different question, but first, let's hear from some other folks, but I'll, I'll save that question, because that's a great point. I thought it felt like, um, well, I can't, like, when you're in a car, and you go for a long trip on the road, okay, um, and um, you, uh, like, you're sitting there, and then your cousin tells you to sit still, and then you just start getting bored because you're doing nothing, and then you end up falling asleep. Yeah, that's what I felt like. Okay. Yeah. Um, it like it felt like I was watching one of those relax videos, like like because like your voice is like calming, and like the way you say things. Well, I appreciate that. That's a nice compliment because I'm I'm trying to do that, right? I'm trying to make it. Uh, a change in the shift in the energy and, in the room. And it's like when I'm at home, I have to like watch a lot because I like dance and I'll like hurt my legs and stuff and it like helps me like relax and stuff. And I'll like be outside dancing for like hours. Wow. So when I come in, I watch those videos and I like will do it and it makes me feel better and calm. And so you make a great point about the relaxing and the mind body connection because by relaxing, you can actually help your, even your body to um, relax and heal and get better blood circulation. And, and there's a lot of research about even colds and things like that, too. So your, your, your comments are excellent. This actually kind of reminds me of the day I was sick a few days ago during the weekend. Because my mom, I couldn't stop moving. My mom wanted me to relax and go to sleep, so she actually put a lot of relaxing videos on for me to just go to sleep. So it sounds like there's a lot of students in this room that already practice. Yep. So, uh, I the, the last question I have, which was prompted by Noah, is what did you notice about the shift in energy in the room once we went through the exercise? So before the exercise, you said you were like, someone said nervous, someone said weird, strange, like not sure what's gonna happen. After we did it, now how do you feel? It feels like the energy shifted from kind of like what's about the hat, like scared almost, and then it shifted over to like really quiet and calm and relaxed. And yawning. And, <laughs> yawning. and yeah. like not so <coughs> antsy like we usually are, like we want to go. We kind of all shifted over to like relaxing and being calm which is in our classroom. <laughs> right. So Sometimes not even the classroom. Yeah, the, so the, the, you have a, a normal energy that you notice about your classroom, but then you, you notice the shift. And you could you feel the shift inside you? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. a couple of you, and it's, it's okay, it's not, I'm not being critical, but a couple of people got the giggles, right? Yeah. So who can speak to that? Why, why did that happen? Because other people made you other, laugh. Other people made you laugh? Yeah. yeah. Because, um, well, I just started to feel funny because, like, when I started to laugh because, of, um, well, because you were, like, breathing and then you're, like, <laughs> 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 and, and then I, I don't really know how to stand straight for a while, so I start to laugh after that because I don't, like, I move and then I just comes out. It just, just comes out, out right? Yeah. So, yeah. I can't sit still for a while because I'm used to playing video games and not relaxing. I'm like... <laughs> so, tell me your name again. Shaylin. Shaylin brings up a great point. I love something she just said. I'm not used to relaxing. So, we are used to being highly distracted. All of us. Right? You know, the first thing I do when I get in my car in the morning is I put my phone on the dashboard. The, you know, hit the music on Pandora. Then I get a phone call, then this, you know, then I got to put the, the map quest on, you know, see where I'm going. So um, we have all these things happening, all these distractors constantly. So we, we become very good at what we practice. So 
we spend a lot of time practicing being distracted. We don't spend a lot of time, as Shaylin said, practicing. Is it Shaylin? No, it's Shaylin. Shaylin, sorry. <laughs> Shaylin. So Shaylin said, it's perfect. We don't spend a lot of time practicing being calm. But if we just did five minutes a day, research shows even just five minutes a day of doing what we did will make a very big positive impact on your life. 